All right, this is uh, Film Talk, Episode 3 with the Judd Brothers, Curtis Judd and Carrie Judd. And today we are going to talk about expectations in professional gigs. Is that a good way to put it, brother? I think that's a good way to put it. I think the um, the challenge comes, especially when you're getting started. Once you've got yourself established, it's, it's a little bit more, kind of goes on autopilot a little bit more, and it makes sense. And every once in a while, you may have to reevaluate. But part of this, what we're talking about here is, um, especially as you're getting started, if you do all your work for free, everyone kind of starts to expect that. What you what what you can do is is what I like how it worked for me, and I, I I survive on dumb luck. So who knows if this is the right way to go about it? Is I made little videos for myself, for my own band, for a friend's band, and then they just got posted, and people started calling asking how much, and then it was like, okay, I need to figure out how much. And um, the one thing that you and I were having a conversation with about about earlier this week was I was like, I took this gig and I agreed to do this, but now I'm doing this, 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 and this. And what would have taken me, should have taken me all in five hours is probably taking me 15 hours. And that was, and that wasn't the client's fault. That was mainly my fault for agreeing to do something and then saying, Oh, you know, the day of the gig being like, I can, I can take care of that too, or I can take care of that too. So a formal proposal is very important. And that way, when they ask for an extra thing, you can send them an invoice and itemize that on the invoice. And um, yeah, I, and I think even, even you know, having some experience and being a few years into this, and you even said that you've, you find yourself taking on gigs that you really underbid and you're going to end up making $5 an hour on. Mm, even less than that, even less. This this is a real tricky thing, especially when you're just getting started out, because there's this tendency to want to say in your in your mind, say things like, "I really need to get this experience so I can put this on my, I can put this in my reel, or I can tell someone I've done this before." Um, and so there's a tendency to want to do something like bend over backwards, do stuff for free, um, charge ridiculously low amounts, um, so on and so forth. And there, there's some risks there. I'm not saying don't do that, but um, the risk is, is that if you set a really low price for your services, the problem is, is that now you've established a customer base that expects really low prices. That's the first problem. Second problem is that you also, uh, what I've found over time is that the people that are super stingy in terms of the amount of money they can pay, and I totally understand, not everyone has budget to do this stuff. People They're the most are, picky. They are. They're the ones that are the most demanding. They want everything. They want this redone. They want that redone. That is almost invariably true with my experience. So the better the deal that you give someone, the more they will try and milk you for as far as work goes. Yep. Yeah, and that's and I think that's because a lot of the, you know, companies that are that have hired video production services in the past, they kind of know what to expect. They've been through the whole process. They know that there's an expense for such, you know, all the different parts of what go into a production and what they can expect as a as a final deliverable for a given amount of money cuz for them that's, you know, they they've been there. They know they know what to do, and they've hired. And they may have started by hiring someone for three hundred bucks to come and shoot a corporate video for them, and then they were really unsatisfied. They were really unhappy with the way it turned out. Or yeah, and and you do you do come to and what I find too is is a couple degrees of separation. So how is how I was talking about how I'd done those videos? What would happen is I would get people first. First, it was like people that I was acquainted with. Hey man, how much do you charge for that? And it was my first impulse was, well, you know, you're my friend, so let's make a music video for 500 bucks. Well, that if you know what goes into just even a simple music video, that really I probably did make six dollars an hour making that video. But um, but the um, it gets easier when you get referrals when people are like, hey, do you know a video guy? Yeah, I know this guy, and it's someone you don't know. And then it's like, yeah, I'd be happy to send you a proposal. And then you get as detailed as you possibly can. You. You think of everything that could possibly go into it. I I um, almost invariably have an in-person meeting whenever possible, and I tell them um, I'll give you a quote, but let's meet and go over the entire scope of everything that's going to need to go into this. And um, I can usually tell five minutes into the meeting if the if the gig is going to happen or not. Um, and it's better for both of you though, because if you're getting paid, you're motivated yourself to do good work. And they're motivated to, mo motivated to take direction to trust you. Um, and that's another, another funny thing too. A lot of the nitpicky clients that you were refer referring to before that like want to get the best deal possible, they, um, 
I notice a lot of times I'll be like, okay, I trust you. I trust you. If someone tells me that they trust me more than like three times, I know that they actually don't trust me. And that I, I don't know what that, and I don't know if that's just me, but I've heard that that that's happened to me like on four different occasions. I trust you, and but they don't, and they want everything fixed. And that goes back to the the nitpicker who wants wants us to make Dunkirk for four hundred bucks. Exactly. Yeah, and I think part of it too is that there's um, you know, with that mentality of um, you know, someone who's operating with a very very small budget. We're talking sub one thousand dollars, but yet they want a really nicely produced four and a half minute video or whatever it is. Um, a, a lot of times, I think what they're, I think sometimes this, the vibe I get that what comes with that mindset is, I know how to do all this. All I need is someone to just operate the camera. It has a camera and it can operate it. <laughs> right? I mean, you, 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 you laugh, but the reality is, is I think that, that mindset totally comes with it. And, and I think even, I think you're, you make a good point about these pre-production meetings where you or not even pre-production meetings, but just sort of proposal meetings where you sit down and talk through, you know, all that's involved. I think that you're doing a couple of really good things there. Number one, you're educating the, the right. potential client. And that's a huge part to, of it. To set, yeah, it is. And, and also setting expectations. So everyone's expectations are very clear going into it. You know, when you talk about post, for example, one of the things I like to do is say, okay, this is how it works. I do the initial edit. You review it. Give me feedback. We come back and do one more edit after that. Then we're done with feedback. And then the last edit that we do, the third one, is where we just correct any glaring issues or mistakes. Um, and so setting those expectations up front is going to save a ton of time in post because we both have experience with post jobs that ended up taking weeks when they should have taken days. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I, I, think, I think the two points maybe that come out of this conversation are setting expectations and, like it or not, educating your client because that is a huge part of the job, whether you like it or not, you know? And, and sometimes you'll get the clients that have done a lot of production stuff and understand um, everything, but, but expectation and education, I think that would probably be, uh, I need to get, the, get a tattoo on my arm or something because <laughs> the times that I don't do that, the times that I kind of like loosey goosey, yeah, we can do that, uh, you know? And then the other thing too that I do, and this, this is really important that I have a lot of, of people asking me about, about, you know, when they're doing pro gigs or starting to do pro gigs, is I always require a client to make a 50% deposit before I will even confirm it on my calendar. And I say that in a very nice way. Um, and, and I think that's also a really important thing to do. Because if they haven't invested that and the day of the shoot comes up and they decide they don't want to do it, you know, you, you, you want to know that they're committed to mm -hmm. the project. Yeah, they need to have, they definitely need to have some skin in the game. And I think that helps a lot. A couple of other uh, thoughts really quickly. Um, it, I understand when you're first getting started, there are some challenges you do. You're, you're going by word of mouth, so it's mostly going to be friends up front. One thing that I think is important to do in that case is I think they still need to pay. You can give them a deep discount, but I think they still need to pay. And what you can do on your proposal and on your invoices is you can put your actual, actually line item all of the costs. So actually price it out as if it wasn't your friend and then put a deep discount at the end. Because then that way, at least as they start referring people, they're, they're not going to have this delusion that, oh, yeah, my friend Kerry can do this and he's super cheap. So, you know, instead, it's going to be like, oh, my friend Kerry does this. He's a, he's a serious professional. You definitely want to talk to him. And that's exactly what I do, like, because I do have, like, close, close friends that I've, like, been in bands with and stuff. And, and I'll be like, look, I can do it for I can I can do it for this much and not lose money. Here is the price that it is. If anyone asks you, like, don't tell them that I'm a good deal. Tell them that I to get that video, it costs this much. Like they don't have to, they don't have to lie. I mean, I don't have to say I paid him this much, but, but yeah, I basically say this video would cost this much if I didn't know you and didn't want to be a part of this and you weren't my best friend and I wasn't going to be the best man at your wedding or whatever, whatever the case may be. So, and, and that way, that way you let them know that part of you giving them that deal is in return, they need to help you, you know, get more, uh, clients that, will pay you for the amount of work you're putting in. Absolutely. Another another quick thought here, if we can. Um, another trap that is, uh, or some a red flag, I guess, if you will, is that if, for example, you're doing post sound on a film, uh, and, and I'm sharing this because I've fallen into this trap in the past, um, and that is if someone comes to you, the production is all done, and they want someone to mix their film for you, and they say something like, we're going to try and find some money in our budget to pay you. <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a big red flag. Like... Um, 
this is and and I agreed to that early on in my career because I thought this is exactly what I need in terms of experience. I need to be able to put a feature film on you know on my resume or my CV or whatever. But you weren't the guy capturing audio, so you have no idea what kind of shape that audio is in. Mm -mm. And I learned to hate red cameras um, because they make such a freaking racket. They, I mean, they have the fans that are like turbine jet engines. And I don't think I don't think all the red cameras are that way. But um, there were some serious problems with a lot of the production audio. And there were, you know, actually some of it was really, really quite good, but some of it was really dodgy. And there was no budget for ADR. There was no budget for Foley. There was no budget for sound effects. There was, you know, music was done, but to, and that was another thing where I felt like there was a challenge too, was that um, they had hired a composer. So they had already paid the composer um, and had already scored everything. But then to make room for the dialogue, I had to kind of do some stuff to the music. I had to EQ it down, you know, make a notch for it. And um, the composer got all angry about it. Like, You've, you're ruining the music. And it's like, well. <laughs> and the director wasn't wasn't stepping in. And I, at some point, we had to kind of just step back and say, look, I, I really don't think this is going to work out. I think you probably need. It was the. Was that the com was that the composer's first time scoring also? I have no idea. I wouldn't be surprised. I would bet you. Yeah. It's, you know, it's one of those things and, and like if they're such a, you know, if that's, if that person is such an artist that they just can't have anyone touch their music and then the music is what carries the entire film. I get the emotional impact and, um, you know, the value and the, the power that music brings totally get that. But when you're in a dialogue scene, dialogue kind of matters too. It, well, that, what's weird about that to me is all you have to do to understand that is watch an episode of whatever dumb TV show, go watch an episode of Grey's Anatomy. That's like I, I bring that up not because I like that show, but because they're famous for their soundtracks and making like unknown bands, their song will get featured, whatever. And go watch how that's mixed in with uh, with the dialogue, like something like that. It's it's not rocket science. It's just audio science. It's pretty basic though. So just just be careful out there, people. Just uh, be careful. Do whatever you can to have proposal meetings up front, so that everyone's on the same page in terms of expectations. Um, that way, you can also talk through all of the what. It only comes with experience. You have to experience and you're going to make mistakes along the way, but you have to make some, you have to get the experience so that you know and, and start getting these red flags in your mind. Okay, they want to do this piece for 900 bucks is, you know, oftentimes what we're tempted to think is, oh, that's four hours of production and I'm good. Well, what about all the prep time? What about all the post time? What about, you know, there are just so many well, things. Well, not only that, like it, we, we had, this is a specialized skill. There's a, there's a story about, I think it was Salvador Dali who, you know, doodled on a napkin and some lady asked if she could have it. And he said, yeah, you can have it for $20,000. And she said, well, that only took you like 15 seconds to doodle. He's like, no, that took me my whole life. Like everything that you've learned up to the point of the gig that you're going to take, everything you know about a camera, about audio, about being an artist, about framing every little detail that, that cost you every year of your life up until that point. And so that's, that's another thing that we kind of undersell ourselves is like, it's not just because like, oh, I have a nice camera, I should get a gig. It's, it's things that you've done and you've done well and you've practiced and worked at. It's just the same as if you were, would you, would you hire a doctor who didn't finish medical school, you know, who didn't have experience with other patients too. It's, 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 you need to really value yourself. And I think that's a th something we all have a hard time doing because it seems like such a pipe dream to make money swinging a camera around, but it's not like you, you can do it. If I can do it, literally anyone can do it. Good. Uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Okay. Let's cut.